Well, this is it. This is the place. Because this is where the earliest human remains in the entire world were discovered. It's been really difficult to find it. It's taken us four hours to walk here, and we've been a circuitous route through the bush. And it seems really strange that there's nothing to mark it, because this is such an important place in our story. And it's as close as I can get to where we all began. Amazing. And this is what the archaeologists discovered. This is a cast of the skull that was found here and which was dated to 195,000 years ago. I think, considering it's so old, it's remarkably complete. OK, the fragile face bones are missing, but most of the brain cases here, we can see the size of the brain and we can see this very characteristic forehead. No other remains of our species, even approaching this age, have been found anywhere else on the planet. This is as near as we can get to the origin of our species. There's something very special about sitting here, looking out at the Omo. I could be on the banks of any African river. Apart from the fact we know that this landscape has been home to humans, people like you and me, for nearly 200,000 years. I'm heading along the South African coast to a place called Pinnacle Point. Today, it's a playground for the rich. But during the construction of this golf course, archaeologists discovered something amazing deep beneath the fairway. This could be the oldest known dwelling of our species anywhere in the world. So this is where you've been digging? This is the oldest part of the cave. Um, what are the dates here, then, as we go down through these layers? Uh, these layers date from 130 to 167,000 years ago. It's just so incredibly ancient. It's amazing. Did you know how important what you were excavating really was? Not until we got those dates. Um, but yeah, uh, amazing, stunning. The evidence in this cave reveals that those ancient families were behaving in ways quite unlike previous species of human. Well, Kyle, that's not from this cave, is it? Because I recognise this. This is a hand axe, isn't it? That's correct. Now, that's more typical of what you would find from about a million and a half years ago to about 300,000 years ago. So what sort of thing were you finding in the cave, then? Um, OK, well, tools like these, blades and points, are much more typical of what we find in this cave made on quartzite, locally available on the beach down here. And in our oldest levels here, alongside these types of tools, we also have these very small bladelet tools. These are tiny. What could such minute blades have been used for? Obviously, these weren't used just in your hand like this, so how would they have been used? It's more likely that those were set in some kind of a handle to make a compound tool, maybe something more like this. This is a uh, a series of small blades set into a handle for use as a knife. Yes, I think that would work. So you think that's how these stone tools are used then, as a, as a knife? Um, that's one possibility. Um, and it's also possible they would have been used for hunting weapons. Kyle and his team have discovered you can make some lethal weapons with these bladelets. This one looks particularly vicious, I think. <laughs> This is one interpretation of how those small back blades might have been mounted. The, 
advantage to this would be that there's these barbs that would prevent the tip from pulling out immediately um, and would it inflict a, a greater injury. Well, I'm going to be spending the night out here in the bush, presumably something our ancestors did all the time, but years of living in civilization have softened me. I've got a big torch here so that uh, if anything comes by, I can get a better look at it in the dark. And I've got this little camera so I can make a video diary throughout the night and uh, talk about what comes along. I'm doing this for real. I'm going to be out here all night. And I really am quite scared. got to be one of the most frightening nights of my life. I did get some sleep, but then I got woken up by these horrendous noises. Sometimes it was hyenas, and then there was something that sounded like a standoff between a hyena and a leopard or something, I don't know what it was. Awful noises. Really, really scary. With the return of the crew, I pluck up my courage and look for signs of the animals that I heard in the night. Oh, just look at this. This is a big male leopard paw print. And there are large hyena prints as well. So these predators, these carnivores, were literally here, about 25 metres away from where I was sleeping underneath that tree. They sounded really close during the night, and I can see now that they were. <laughs> 